quick. Uh, special message real quick uh, as, as I'm thinking about it. If you've never had a father and you wonder, what is my real daddy? What, is, what should he look like? Look at Jesus Christ. He is the exact image of the Father in heaven. He is the fullness of God in body form. Colossians 2, 9. That's, that's who he is. To those of you who never had fathers, that's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your earthly father. And I ask you to forgive me for your earthly father where he couldn't be where you need him. And I'm sorry. Well, I'm here to tell you Jesus is your real father. It says you're a child of God. That means Jesus is your father. And when he spanks you in love, chastises, let's call it what it is, it's a, it's a, it's a holy spanking. In Pilgrim's Progress, the, after being ensnared by the flatterer, uh, he, uh, Christian and hopeful, are taken over the lap of the shepherd. And he spanks them with his rod. And what they say is, thank you for saving my life. They didn't say, God, why are you doing this? They said, thank you. Because we would have gone to hell in a handbasket. Mm -hmm. Count it all joy. Yes. I didn't expect this, but I think that actually goes part of the message. Father, may your name be glorified. Thank you so much for your love and mercy. You chastise us because you know it's good for us. And, and forgive us where we've resisted. Let us go in, in, in peace and submission, saying the whole time, not my will, but yours be done. Open my lips and my mouth will declare forth your praise. Jesus, let it be your words through this broken vessel of a body, and let it not be any imagination of my head, any emotion, or preaching at any particular person, or thing, or soapbox, but only to deliver meat to your children in due season. Father, I thank you for the privilege and responsibility you've given me to share uh, difficult words, but words that force us to look up. Let us not grow weary in doing good. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, may you be praised. Go to Romans 8. Uh, I don't really have a title for this. Uh, other than these are things on the Holy Spirit. This is a message on the Holy Spirit. Uh, that was just water. And, uh, you know, I mean, there, there's, there's so much to say about uh, what the whole, rather, who the Holy Spirit is. I think we talk a lot about what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit's not an it. The Holy Spirit is a who. It's a him. Okay? Jesus says greater things you will do. He says, I go to the Father, but I will send the Holy Spirit. Jesus, okay. In the potential of sounding blasphemous, and, and, and critics are going to criticize. Naysayers are going to speak evil. I don't care. I lost everything. It doesn't matter. I have Jesus. I love Raven Hill. We, having nothing, possess all things. Jesus, in bodily form, is in the heavenlies. This is greater things you will do, because I go to the Father. But he sends us himself in a form and fashion that is not limited to Jerusalem. It's not limited to Israel. Do you understand? And, you know, and, and I've heard... Um, 
people talk. If only I had, we had Moses to speak on these. Moses is dead. Okay, well, he, he lives with, with, with the Lord. We, um, if Jesus was only here to show us these things, are you kidding me? Do you understand? Jesus, absolutely, I magnified the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit's purpose is to reveal Christ to you, reveal Christ in you, and bring you to Christ. And wash my hands. Okay, let me say that again. I don't, I don't want y'all to miss this. This is important. Mom, I needed to wash my hands. The Holy Spirit's function is to bring Jesus to you, reveal Jesus in you, and bring you to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is not Jesus in body form. It is God himself. I mean, we could spend weeks on this. We could spend all of eternity on this and not even get to the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. But suffice it to say that the purpose of the Holy Spirit has been misunderstood and constantly misunderstood. Why? Because our own stupid flesh wants warm fuzzies. Well, you know what? Get over your warm fuzzies. Jesus didn't get any on that cross. You can, you can go play with your video games and you can go drink your drink, get your religious high and sing songs and, and get every t Bible teaching known in the world. That's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit... It's not, in, oh, let's prophesy, speak tongues. Oh, that's a good Bible teacher. Last time I checked, Jesus is my teacher. How do you know he's a good teacher? He brings you along, not on Sunday, not on Saturday. Every day of the week, every moment in time where uh, you're walking in life and you spent nine months trying to swing a hammer, don't know how to swing a hammer, and finally somebody yes. comes alongside you, grabs your hand, and swings it properly, and says, you have to do it this way. The Holy Spirit does that to us. How many in here have you guys tried Bible memorization and seem like you can't get the best of it? Yeah, I'm guilty, I can't do it. I can't just start reading scripture. Okay, what did I need to say to these? I, that's just Bible memorization. Mm -hmm. Without, there is truth. But Jesus says, there will become a time that they will worship me. What? In spirit. spirit and truth. Truth without the spirit is legalism, folks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Spirit without truth is license and flesh. Come on now. Spirit of truth. Lord, I can't memorize a single word. Please write it on my heart. We were just talking about this today. He says, okay, go to this section in your time with the Lord. And you open up Proverbs and you start reading Proverbs in faith that God will reveal to you what you need to hear. And he says, you read a proverb, for example, this was the one that came to mind today. As a door turns on its hinges, so does a slugger turn on its bed. And you're like, okay, so I read it. Okay, wow, okay. Lord, hmm, what does that mean? And then you close your Bible and you get ready for the day and you're taking care of your kids or you're going to work or... And next thing you find, and I'm speaking to mothers, and your kids, you try to get, you say, come on guys, let's go clean up your, your room. We need to get ready for, for, for breakfast. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's, I can't do it. As a door turns on its hinges, so does a slugger turn on his bed. Get off the couch and go put away the dishes like I told you. And you're like, huh, Lord. And God said, there it is. Are you going to forget that application? No, Lord. And he'll say quietly, I just wrote my word upon your heart. That's how I do it. It's the carpenter journeyman, and I, I can speak from experience, grabbing your hand and swinging the hammer and finally says, I am not going to hold your hand to swing that hammer 
for the rest of this night. Now, swing it. And God does that. Well, thankfully, God says, I will be with you until you start doing it. And then he feels like he goes away. And they're like, God, where are you? I thought you were supposed to help me and strengthen me and all this stuff. You're not answering me, but I know you're there. Child, he wants you to grow up. He'll handhold you until he knows he can release you. We see it in nature. And until you, he knows you're ready to go, you're not going anywhere. I don't care how good your intentions are, you're not going anywhere. Some have struggled with wanting to have your own business, but unless you're ready to serve, it ain't happening. Yes. Amen. And that means you have to take the lowest position. The higher you go, the lower you're going to serve. So the Holy Spirit is not about tongues. Tongues accompany the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not prophecy. Scripture is prophecy. The Bible said Scripture is prophecy. And no prophecy is without anyone's own interpretation. Look at Peter. The Holy Spirit has made this thing of paper and ink alive. That's the only difference of this book, as opposed to any other book out there, is the Holy Spirit who wrote this book through men, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Paul, James, Jude. Okay? The Holy Spirit enlivens the word that is there. Outside of the Holy Spirit, this is nothing but no different than this legal pad that goes in the fire. This withstands every fire, even the fires of hell. But it's the Holy Spirit that made it so because the words of Jesus spoke this into being. Going back to creation because God said, let there be light and it was so and he with peace he holds all of the universe by the word of his power. And that's the Holy Spirit's function, is to strengthen the very words of God, to draw you to himself, to reveal Christ in you, and to do something else. Romans 8. For I consider that, uh, 18, that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. The creation eagerly waits with anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage of corruption into the glorious freedom of God's children. For we know that the whole creation, listen, has been groaning together with labor, labor pains until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the Spirit as the first fruits, we also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption and redemption of our bodies. Go to verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit also, this is, this is another function of the Holy Spirit, joins to help in our weakness. Not in your strength, in your weakness. Because we don't know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit, the Spirit Himself, not itself, Himself, intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. Mm -hmm. And He who searches the hearts knows the Spirit's mindset. Who's He? God the Father searches the hearts, knows the Spirit's mindset. Why does He know the Spirit's mindset? Whose mind is it? God. The mind of Christ. Because He intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Wait a minute. Who's our high priest? Ever living, making intercession for us? Jesus. So how do you know how to pray? Because it's His Spirit in you. Amen. It was said of Leonard Ravenhill, he always knew how to pray. Why? Because he only prayed the prayers Jesus would pray. Why? Because he always said, Jesus, let me pray the prayers you're praying right now. No, it's crap. That I may intercede as you are. No, it's not witchcraft. It's, it's intercession. Go to Ezekiel 9. Go to Ezekiel 9. We talked about groaning. 
Ezekiel 9, verse 4. Pass throughout the city of Jerusalem. No, that's okay. This is important for all y'all. Pass throughout the city of Jerusalem. And the Lord said to him, Nine. Uh, I'm sorry, 9 verse 4. The Lord said to him, And put a mark on the foreheads of the men who, say, say, everybody say it with me, who sigh and groan over all the detestable practices committed in it. Folks, I feel like we don't groan. When you don't groan, but you start, well, that's not right, and you start raising a fuss, that's not the Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the very life breath, excuse me, the very life breath of Jesus Christ himself. That's why he gave it to us. Woo! Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit is the very life breath of Jesus Christ. That's why he gave it to us. It sounds sort of paradoxical, but it's the very nature of God. Why? I do what I see my Father do. What the Father do at creation? He gave. What did Jesus do on the cross? He gave. He gave his life for us. That's right. This is how we know what love is. That. And he gave up his rights. He gave up his rights. This is how we know what love is. That Jesus Christ gave his life for us. He denied himself. And then when he went into heaven, he said, I give you the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he's ever living. Now the Spirit is given to us. Let me also say that we're... I'm, this, this, I think, more is for anybody who's listening. I, I feel led to share this. We're not a big congregation, folks. We're not. We're not about numbers. We're about trees. We are about planting trees. That would plant more trees. That would plant more trees. It's time for the church to grow into maturity. Enough with milk. And into meat. Amen. Stop claiming your rights over things. You don't have any rights. Start serving. Like it says in, in Luke, where it says the only thing you should say after everything's been completed, I've only done what I've been commanded to do. I'm an undeserving servant. You deserve nothing. You came into the world naked and you're going to leave naked. Amen. You don't see a U-Haul falling in a hearse. But I will tell you this. You come in to this world gathering souls, that's the only thing you're going home with. Amen. Preach the message of life. Grown first. A woman doesn't have a baby once she's conceived. No. But it has to grow. Why well, need a baby now? Because you just got pregnant. That's ridiculous. Okay. But there has to be a forward movement. Well, okay, so I'm going to have a baby. And okay. So I'm just going to sit here because God said I'm going to have a baby. What did Abraham do for all those years when he was given the promise? You will have a child. He waited. What does that mean? Does that mean he just sat on his sedan and having a, you know, having a goat and said, I'm waiting for the promise? No. He got up. The difference is you don't get up just, well, it's another day. He got up in faith. God is going to fulfill that promise that day. By the same token. And if it didn't, okay. It wasn't time yet. Tomorrow's a new day. Your mercies are new every morning. Every good and perfect gift is from above. That groaning in you. Is the, it is a groaning and a grow in. For the revealing of the sons of God. That's our last promise. The redemption of our bodies. We're not there yet. 
And I want to suggest that the hastening of, of Christ's coming is the more you give in your groaning, not away from your groaning. How many of you are literally groaning because you're tired, you have family problems, you're having children issues, you're having struggles of life, you're having people that just frustrate you, You've ha you're having people complain about you at the job because of your promise, the promise that God has given you. How many of y'all have wanted to give up this week? How many of y'all just want to say, you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not talking ending your life. I'm talking just, you know what, I, I'm just, I'm just going to stop fighting. I'm just, I'm just going to eat, sleep, and go to bed. Or, you know, eat, sleep, and, and, you know, go to the bathroom. As you are walking in your day to day, and inside, you groan, and you say, I can't take it anymore but I just got to put another foot in front of the other. Do you understand? That is the Holy Spirit. He is revealing Christ in you. Every waking moment, oh God, I can't get up. That's the Holy Spirit revealing Christ in you. And you do get up, painfully so, but you still do it. That's the Holy Spirit. You're like, God, I feel like I can't even read scripture. God, I can't stand this anymore. That's the Holy Spirit. It's groaning in you. It's causing that dissatisfaction in you. Saying, I just want to be, in I just want to spend time with you, Lord. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to be with Jesus because it is Jesus. It's His Spirit. It's that essence. It, it, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's that essence. It's, it's Him. It's that person that makes you long for Him. Like a bride who longs for her husband. When I was out of town, Esther's like, can you come like yesterday back home now? I mean, she wasn't that uh, expressive. I'm, I'm the expressive one, in case you didn't know. No way. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I imagine that. Uh, but she did. And she's like, but I'm okay. Well, that's the heart of the bride. Oh, God, Jesus, please come back for me. I want to God, come back. I want to be with you and I said, can't sit together in a quiet place. There's not enough time in the day to read your word. Just, just talk to you and talk to you about other people who are really suffering and struggling. By the way, if something comes to you and you're like, man, I wonder how so-and-so is doing, that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why would you be concerned about that person but for the Holy Spirit? I'm sorry, folks. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't care about anybody but yourself. Amen. Face it. You don't. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is other focused and concerned yes. about others. Yes. yes. Amen. Look, if you are so focused on yourself, I'm sorry, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. It, 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 it is so. Because the Holy Spirit is like, come on, let's go. There are people worse off than you. Come on. I've given you food, clothing. You have a roof over your head. You actually have band-aids. Did you know there are people in Africa, they get a cut, they die. Because they don't have band-aids, alcohol, neosporin. They have no herbs. They have no essential oil. I'm sorry, Young Living, Hopewell Oil, Deuterra, not there. Sorry. People will die from a cut on their finger. They don't have hydrogen peroxide. Alcohol? No. Not even grain alcohol. Sorry. Warlords have them. You stink, you get to die. Why are you concerned? Now, concern should move you. I mean, the Holy Spirit's job is to create that concern, but you don't move out from that concern because you'll fail. You'll fall. The Holy Spirit will drive you to your knees. That means you cry out to God, and He will keep building it up till finally you, you'll run out of this. You'll run out of this house screaming. And say, God, I'm tired. I'm done with this. And he'll say, he will empower you. Last time we checked, the Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. And the Holy Spirit got him out. Hmm. With power. Yes. But the Lord had to do it. He didn't develop power on his own. He could have. 
Satan said, you can have all this. He said, uh-uh. No. The Holy Spirit came. Angels came and ministered to him. Look at the book of Luke. Folks, the Holy Spirit's to convict of sin. The Holy Spirit's to convict even of the slightest thing. How many times have you gone to somebody, hey man, I, I really should have said I'm sorry, I apologize. And they're like, you didn't offend me at all. I really appreciated you saying that. And you felt like you've sinned against the Lord as if you've committed adultery or murder. Good. Have a righteous sorrow. Godly sorrow produces life which leads to repentance. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. He groans. And you've got to agree with that groaning. And that, that, that ache, that anguish. That, that anguish. If you don't have God's anguish, ask for it. God is ready to put something in you. And even if it's for your own family, so be it. Your family is more important than anything else. Your sanctification, your holiness is most important. And it's from that outflow where you're just so moved. You're like, I got to go do this. And you'll know it because you can't sit still. And there's a burning in your bones. Amen. And you just get up and you're like, you're like, Lord, what do I do? Oh, I, the more you ask, Lord, what do I do? The more you know what to do. I just got to go out there. I feel like there's more to talk on this subject. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus in you. And I think, in a way, the Roman Catholics have the following uh, aspect of it correct. So to reflect on the wounds of Christ. Thomas Kempis in the 1400s wrote a classic. It's called The Imitation of Christ. And it's, it focuses on imagine if you are on that cross. This is the identification process where, again, this is how the Holy Spirit functions. He brings to memory. He brings to your mind, to your remembrance. What Jesus did for you. We sang the song, Where Would I Be? I say thank you. And that's what he does. He reminds you of... And, and, and I, God bless those, some of those people who put videos of the medical perspective of the crucifixion and the passion of the Christ. That's, that's what he does. He reminds you, look at the wounds. We, there are so many songs. See his nail-scarred hands and his feet. Look upon his thorny brow. That's the Holy Spirit. You think the Holy Spirit is just to give you a warm fuzzy? Warm fuzzies come after. You think the Holy Spirit is there to give you prophecy after prophecy after prophecy? Who cares? Who cares? Because when that prophecy may or may not come true, what's going to carry you through difficult circumstances? What's going to carry you through, I'm sorry, you have no food in cupboards. What's the prophecy going to do? Last time I checked, my Bible says in Proverbs, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a good word makes them glad. Jesus Christ is that good word. Let me say that again. Jesus Christ is the good word that makes me glad. He's my living hope. I look at those scars in his hands. I look at that whip on his back. I look at that blood. Every last drop was for me. That's the Holy Spirit. How else are you going to focus on the blood of Jesus? How else are you going to see that feet with holes and him suffering humiliation on that cross outside of the Holy Spirit? I'm sorry, Christian. Where you say, well, if I don't focus on, on the wounds and this and that of Christ, you're saying I don't have the Holy Spirit. I don't know, but you better be asking the one who gave the Holy Spirit. 
If you cannot fall in love and weep and groan over what he did for you. And there are some criticisms from Christians about the passion. I was a new believer. I saw the passion. I was undone. As a Jew coming to Christ, seeing the passion, I wept. I said, oh God, you did this for me. Folks, the greatest act of the Holy Spirit is to change your heart towards the things of God. I'm sorry, there's only two sides, towards God or away from God. If God be for us, who can be against us? And if you are not for God, I'm sorry, you're against him. Period. If you don't gather with him, you scatter with him. You better be about the work of Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit's job. He empowers you to draw to his kingdom. If I, even I, be lifted up, would draw a man unto myself, John 14. Or John 12, excuse me. That's the Holy Spirit. When you weep, seeing him whipped 39 times, bleeding, flesh ripped off his back, Verses responding to, eh, it's a bunch of fairy tales. Oh, pff, whatever. I don't want to look at this, this gross stuff. I'm sorry, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to quicken you, stir you. Yes. Yes. Make fire into you where it breaks you, it makes yes. you weep. Yes. I'm not saying whether you weep or not, no. But something in you changes and you can't help it. And you're just so moved. I'm not saying if you don't cry, you don't have the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that. Please. The Holy Spirit is not about flesh. It's about the internal. That's, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Dear friend, seeing my wife suffering on her deathbed, just ate. I could just see it all over her face. We sang Christ be magnified one night. At the house, they lived close to the hospital, and I was staying there. And she couldn't help but weep. Because she said, that's my best friend. And, Jesus, and, and she wanted to be pleasing for Jesus. And that's what happened. She was so moved. And said, I can't bear to see her like this. God, help her. And God gave her word, I'm taking her home. Folks. That's the Holy Spirit. What more can I say? Go to Romans 8 one more time. Please. Guys, is this stirring you? Is this encouraging you to live for tomorrow? Regardless of what hell throws against you. The Holy Spirit's function. Lastly, Romans 8, 31. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He did not even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything? He's given us the Holy Spirit, guys. Come on, what, what more do you need? What do you want? Let me, ask, let me ask a really hard question. Who in here is feeling dissatisfied? I'm sorry, what do you want? What more do you want? Mm. Come on now. He gave it to you. He gave himself to you. Amen. What else do you need? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not rebuking or, or knocking anyone down, please. Come on now. The church is to stir us up. It, it is to cleanse us, to refresh us, to, but by the same token, to uncover the hiddenness of our hearts so that we may all confess together and be in, in, in fellowship with the light. Because the God, because Hebrews 4.13, we're naked and exposed before him. We ought to be exposed one before one and another and say, I'm dissatisfied. And yeah, we pray for one another. Guys, I'm really depressed. I'm really upset. I'm dissatisfied. I don't have what I want. I, am, I really don't. I don't like what I'm, what's going on. And we'll comfort you. We'll encourage you. We'll, we'll hug you. We'll love you. We'll pray for you. We'll, we'll just be with you. And after all of that, I'm sorry, you'll get a word of rebuke, hopefully leading to godly growth. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what? Our comforter, but also our chastiser. 
1 John 2, 27. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. If you're not ready to receive it, you can't. You are not, as we say, what? Teachable. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. And then the Holy Spirit will teach you. Or shall we say chastise you? In the Hebrew, the word there is chanach. And that word is, it literally means narrowing. And it's one letter away from chanach, which literally means to choke. So, and um, in that choking, narrowing, Jesus says narrow is the way that leads to life. Folks get choked by the Holy Spirit. And, and I mean that tongue in cheek, get choked by him. Let him bring you to a point where you're like, okay, God, I give up. Who played Mercy when they were a kid? You know, uh, you know, uh, you know say uncle or Mercy when you mm. grab the hands and you're twisting. Yeah. And then, and, you know, say uncle, say uncle, uncle. You know, uh, okay. Let him do that to you. So that you say, okay, uncle. I give up. I give up. I surrender. And then he teaches. Howard Pittman, if you haven't heard his testimony, you should. Who can bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. He's, okay, I've, this is often had trouble with these verses. Who is the one who brings an accusation? God is the one who justifies. Let's put it in plain terms. A kid comes to me, so-and-so, you know, he didn't put the dishes away right. That's an accuser. And I'm going to justify or make right or give an explanation. Not the other child who put the dishes away wrong. I justify, not that child. Stop justifying yourself. Stop making an excuse for yourself. And trust your hands into the Lord. That's the Holy Spirit. He brings the justification. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died. Which means he, con he was condemned. But even more, has been raised. That means he's over condemnation. He's also at the right hand of God. And intercede for us. Go up to verse 27. Because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Come on now. The Holy Spirit and Christ are both interceding. And you'll love this. In Jewish, in Torah, the testimony of how many witnesses proves true? Two. Two. You have the Holy Spirit, you have Jesus, and you have God the Father. Hallelujah. You guys have three witnesses that testify. That's my son. That's my daughter. They're interceding. I will answer. They're true. Amen. And guess what? If your prayers aren't answered, then you can say, Lord, is this prayer of the flesh? If it's of the flesh, you have no witness. Come on now. But if it's of the Spirit, oh, there's witness in heaven and on earth. Hallelujah. That's the Holy Spirit. He provides that witness. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? I'm sorry, you have the Holy Spirit. Who can separate you? Can affliction or anguish or persecution? The Holy Spirit's a fire of God. And if you're in affliction, persecution, and anguish, guess what? He's that fourth man in the fire, and you're in there too. And can affliction, anguish, or persecution, famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No. The Holy Spirit keeps you in that fire. The Holy Spirit will even turn up that fire seven times hotter. Guess what? You ain't burning. You are being made a diamond. Why? Because Jesus is that diamond. I need to explain something about um, those of you who are having problems at work or people not listening to you or taking the words wrong or just flat out accusing you. You got nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing. I will say this. You start catering to their opinions, you will grieve the Holy Spirit. I've done it, and I've repented. Not recognizing, oh shoot, Lord, I was afraid of what others would say about me. I'm sorry. It grieves. I mean, you feel like a ripping. Repent. And that ripping will go away, and you'll... And you will, Dietrich Bonhoeffer grieved that he, he agreed with the Nazi position over the German church saying it had nothing to do with the Jews and he didn't preach at his brother-in-law's father's funeral. His brother-in-law was a Jewish believer, but his, his brother-in-law's father was Jewish and not. And he said, no, I'm not going to, you know, he listened to advice of men that told him don't do it. He did, he, he, he listened and he was grieved. 
He said, I will never do that again. I will stand up and I don't care what hell comes against me. Right before he was hanged, he said, this is not the end. Our victory is certain. This is only the beginning. And he was Amen. hanged. Amen. Your death is God's victory. Amen. Does he want you to die? No, he wants full, full harvest from your life. You better not take it early because now you're stealing his life, not yours. You're not stealing it. You're stealing his life. Don't belong to you. As it is written, because of you, I just said this, we are being put to death all day long. We are being put to death all day long. We are being put to death all day long. God, I feel like I'm dying here. Yes, you are. But I, actually, you're not fully dying. I'm just ripping you a little bit. I'm just pruning you. Because only the live branches hurt. The dead branches don't. Dead fish swim downstream. Mm -hmm. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than victorious through him who loved us. We didn't love him. He loved us. The Holy Spirit provides testimony that you are loved. The Holy Spirit confirms God's love to you. Because you fall in love with John 3.16. You fall in love with Jesus Christ more and more each day. It's growing. For I am persuaded. Are you persuaded? Are y'all persuaded? No. That not even death or life, angels or rulers. I don't care what government systems in place. I don't care what anybody says. Media, internal fightings evil messengers who come to you and give you a bad report. Psalm says that the righteous man is not afraid of bad news. Things present or things to come. I don't care about the mark of the beast. I have God's mark upon me and nobody's going to rip it off me unless I refuse it. Guys, I'm going to say that again. You, if you are bought by the blood of Jesus, the mark of the beast will never come near you. Never! Never! You don't have to fear the mark of the beast. If you're looking at Jesus and you're resting in his love, the mark of the beast won't even come near you. Though a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. What does it say? Though none shall come near you, you will only look and see the destruction of the wicked. The wicked are the ones who believe, who say, oh yeah, I love God and don't do what he says. That's the wicked. Not pimps, not prostitutes, not drug dealers. Not drunkards. They know they they're, they're sin. They know they struggle. But the ones who got their, part of my language, their poop in the group, they got their stuff together. You don't have to fear. Neither height or depth or any created thing. Not a vaccine, not cell phones, not any bad food, good food, medicine, or anything. Nothing. Nothing. No trial. No difficulty, not even your own children. That sometimes you just want to string them up by their toenails and whip them with a wet noodle. No. <laughs> None of them. Nothing. Has the power to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I heard a message years ago. He's at a funeral. A Christian man committed suicide. Didn't talk much to people for some reason. Lost his job, killed himself. His wife found him in the garage, hanging. The pastor gave a very encouraging message. And I've heard, actually we had our, at the church that Leanne and I got married, um, one of the pastors, his wife committed suicide. The pastor's wife committed suicide. She, um, had surgery, a lot of pain, took some medicine, and she OD'd on pills. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm done. She, I don't know if she left a note, but the impression was, I'm done. Is she in hell? That's not for me to judge. But I do know this, Revelation says salvation belongs to our God, not ourselves. Don't be concerned if you have a family member who's committed suicide feel I need to address this. Don't be concerned if you have a family member that's committed abortion. 
don't be concerned if somebody's done something, died a tragic death, and you were unsure, they had inklings of desire towards God, and you're not sure, and you have doubts. Paul says, I'm persuaded. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Job said, we are, I am saved by the skin of my teeth. Salvation belongs to God. Rest in knowing. You can't do anything to earn it. If the only thing was, oh Jesus, help me. He hears your cry. He hears your cry. He hears your cry. Guys, he hears your cry. For some reason, I feel to share. I know you guys have been crying. I know you guys have been in pain and turmoil and have said, when is enough enough? Guys, you're in fire. You're not being separated. You're being drawn close. That's the Holy Spirit. You're crying. That's the Holy Spirit. He's purging. It is Proverbs that says, Purr, remove dross from the silver and the smith as material for a vessel. Remove wickedness from the presence of a king. His throne is established in righteousness. The king is Jesus. It's his throne. The wickedness is where you've made promises and you couldn't keep. And he's burning it up out of you. And he's removing it from his presence because he wants, he wants your faithfulness. And he'll, he'll burn it out of you. And every time you weep and you hurt, that's the Holy Spirit burning out every time you've lied, every time you have not fulfilled your promise, or you're not careful with your words. I'm sorry, guys. If you're not careful with your words, God will hold you accountable. Amen. You will give an account for every idle word you speak. Every word you speak, you will give an account for it. In Jesus' name, yes. You will. You will give an account. You will give an account for every motive you have of giving of every giving to others, why you're doing devotions, why you're doing whatever, you will give an account. I, 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 I feel it, I don't know why, but it's been earned, it's been Bring it. for the last 10, 15, 20 minutes. My case, when I went to prison, I raped my 19 year old daughter. I went to prison for five years. But in that going to prison, the Lord delivered me. I was not supposed to receive anything from my victim. I got a letter from my daughter. And she said, Daddy, I love you and I forgive you. Daddy, I know without the alcohol you would have never done this. Daddy, I love you. That was my breakthrough. That was the breakthrough that broke the iceberg because I was broken. I was broken down. That's how I got the Holy Ghost. And I know it's alive and well today. Amen. I was broken. And from that point on, that brokenness is what got me living today. I'm being persecuted every day from my past. Kelvin. Every day the enemy is allowing me to try to look back. He wants me to try to remember what he delivered, what God has delivered me from. Mm -hmm. But the devil is a lie. I was, I was only going to ask if I'm led to ask him. And do, do you want to be on camera or no? No. Okay, fine. No. That's fine. No worries. But again, Please, see, go on. see the, the, what separates me Thank you, Father. What separates me from what other witnesses say they have? They ain't broken yet. Mm -hmm. They ain't been broken yet. You understand? If you got it all, and you got it all figured out, you don't need God. What you need God for? Mm -hmm. You don't need it. Amen. You got it already. Your gifts is already, you already getting your gifts. Yeah. Your gifts is from the world. My gift came from the kingdom. 
which my Savior sits at the right hand today. Come on. And show me he's real. Come on. Hallelujah. And so I don't know why. But it's just been, I went to the bathroom and it's just been aching me like, who, why? But I have to confess this thing. Amen. That the devil may know you are liar. Amen. You can try to destroy me in my name, but I'm saved by the blood of Christ. Jesus. I'm saved. Woo. And I'm grateful for that. Amen. Brother, I want to bless you for your courage. That's a... That's hard. Thank you, Father. Thank you. If we walk in the light as you say that we are in the light, we will have fellowship one with another. Brother, I also want to give you a word that the more you confess and you are, because it's really antithetical to the world. The world says, put on a good show. God says, break your show. Put on your brokenness. I've been around. In your doing that, that's fine. Uh, in your doing that, the more you do it, I had to learn to do it. I had stopped doing it for 10 years. What? I lost my compassion. And then the Lord showed me, be open about, I was a sex addict, slept with 16 women, manipulated. I probably have a child out there somewhere. I don't know. Um. Uh, I actually had to deal business with God and say, okay, Lord, if there's somebody out there, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I, I listened to the message of Duck Dynasty uh, uh, on I Am Second. Phil Robertson found out he had a daughter, and he received her, and now she lives next door to him. Amazing testimony, beautiful, redemptive testimony. But uh, the, the more you do that, and you showcase your brokenness. If they don't want to hear it, that means the Holy Spirit is so present, it's driving them away. That's also function of the Holy Spirit. It will drive away the wicked, and it brings in the righteous. It, he does it, and, and it draws them to Jesus. And if they don't like it, he says, get away from me. You will have nothing in my glory. Go ahead, say what you're going to say. I, 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 you know, I get persecuted so much. You know, the reason why I enjoy to come here Saturdays to be with this family is because I don't feel like I have another family. My family has thrown me out to birth. Well, they feel they have, but they don't understand what's about to come about. <laughs> Death to me is one of the greatest things ever. <laughs> you know why? I've had my highs. And I've had my lovers. And I understand who's in control. Amen. So if getting me out the way <laughs> makes you think your life is going to be better, let's watch and see. Let's watch and see what the enemy has for you. He's going to continue to send you out to speak against the child of God. And, 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 and in that, if the world and your words, which I know, I'm going to be safe. Takes you to a point where you think you're going to be destroy me. Be careful. You're telling lies. You're telling lies. You're teaching these things to people who know God, but from the flesh can only receive it because the ghosts will tell you, "Would you just say?" <laughs> oh no, away from me. The ghosts will move it out the way because it's a lie. Amen. It's a blasphemy. Of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. It's going to push you away. Hey, what you just say? Will you show me where you are above the Holy Ghost? Show me. You don't even know Christ. The Holy Spirit function. That's another one. What we were talking about brokenness. When I don't know as you began to talk about Romans. It, 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 Romans, it just told me to put brokenness. See, a lot of people don't understand that brokenness. I got this way for surrendering in my brokenness. Yeah. I needed help. I needed help for going the way that I went. The things that I've done. I needed somebody. The Holy Spirit. I didn't have it as a kid. Every thought to the captivity of Christ. Exactly so, what you said. That in itself, you know, I, I come here, I look forward to coming here on yeah. Saturdays to see the children, to be with the monks and the brothers and the sisters. But I'm going to tell you, 
Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank I'm you. sorry, brother. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. What's that? Um, I'm so sorry for you. Uh, were you going to say anything else? I mean, I think we've all heard. There's, there's many more. But you'll know it's the Holy Spirit. That's the one thing that's also present. Is you know that you know that you know who it is. That's the function of the Holy Spirit. He makes himself known. Father in heaven. It's all you, Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit to bring forth your fruit. Jesus, continue your great work in bringing your church together. Father, let this message, whatever it be, have its own way. We love you, Jesus. You're in Jesus, we pray. Have your good work. Make us fit vessels for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.